Hey there, future lifesavers. Let's talk about a super cool drug called procainamide. This is a life-saving medication used to manage and treat some serious heart rhythm problems. Think ventricular and supraventricular arrhythmias, atrial flutter or fibrillation, and something called Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Basically, it's a go-to drug when someone's heart rhythm is dancing off beat and we need to get it back on track. So how does procainamide do its thing? Picture it like a security guard for your heart's fast sodium channels. It latches onto these channels, preventing them from bouncing back after repolarization. In doing so, it turns down the volume on the heart's excitability and puts the brakes on conduction velocity. It's like your heart gets a relaxed, take it easy message, helping it maintain a more steady and rhythmic beat. It can also put a bit of a dampener on myocardial contractility by cranking up the electrical stimulation threshold of the ventricle and the his Purkinje system. When it comes to dosing, we're talking about intravenous administration. The standard dose is between 20 to 50 milligrams per minute. You want to continue this until the rhythm is back to normal, or if any of the following happens. The patient starts to show signs of hypotension, the QRS duration increases by more than 50%, or you've hit the maximum dose of 17 milligrams per kilogram. After that, you switch to a maintenance dose of 1 to 4 milligrams per minute. But be careful here. If the patient has prolonged QT or congestive heart failure, it's a no-go. Now let's talk pharmacology. Procainamide starts working its magic within 10 to 30 minutes, which is pretty quick in the grand scheme of things. The half-life elimination is between 2 to 5 hours, depending on how well the patient's kidneys are functioning. Like all drugs, procainamide does come with some potential side effects. These can include cardiac toxicity or dysrhythmias, QRS, QTC, and PR prolongation, ectopic beats or premature ventricular contractions, bradycardia, hypotension, and even bone marrow toxicity that can lead to a decrease in all types of blood cells or a granulocytosis, not fun. It can also cause a drug-induced lupus erythematosus-like syndrome, but this is usually in folks who've been taking the drug for a long time. There are also certain situations where procainamide is a definite no-no. This includes patients who are allergic to procainamide or ester-type local anesthetics, those with a complete heart block, second-degree AV block, or various types of hemi block. You also want to use it with caution in patients with heart failure, electrolyte imbalances, especially low potassium and magnesium, myasthenia gravis patients, and if the patient has liver or kidney problems. So there you have it, folks, the down low on procainamide. Keep in mind every patient is unique, so always tweak your treatment to fit the individual. We hope this video has helped shed some light on this medication. If you're hungry for more knowledge, don't stress. We've got a whole series on cardiac arrest medications waiting for you to dive into. So hit that subscribe button, check out the ACLS Pharmacology playlist, and stay tuned for more. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep saving lives. Until next time.